Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, I'm glad to actually see the honourable gentleman from Central South. But, but that's because, but that's because, that's because he recently pointed out that residents of his local Labour council are, and I quote in his words, charged much more in council tax, but in return receive lower quality services. Now, it's a good little clever dig from, mm, uh, from Richard. Now, however, you're basically saying, uh, I'm the leader of a party where I had a Tory MP who wasn't doing his job properly. Yes, so yes. I'm not sure it actually doesn't just come back on him. But again, I think for most people, again, that's a, that's a sort of dig that, aha, we've had someone who's defected. Mm. The health secretary was being interviewed on the media rounds the other day and said that at no point, at any point, had Anne Poulter ever mm. raised his concerns about underfunding or management yeah. of the NHS. Not one letter, not one can have a word, yeah. uh, health secretary. So that rather undermines his claim. It seems totally to me does. this is a man, he's, he's already knew we were going to leave Parliament mm -hmm. the next election. Uh, he's going to be leaving as a Labour MP. So I'd, I'd be very surprised he doesn't have a nice little job as an advisor or a nice little peerage. And he's not standing uh, in this election, yeah. as you correctly intimate. Yeah. So we'll, right. you know, we'll see where he goes. But um, certainly that was that sort of over now. I don't think Dan Poulter will be particularly well noted or on the media. I mean, I'm sorry, no one had ever heard of him. Yeah, well, that's true. But actually another person who we certainly... I mean, Benedict's chuckling. I mean, I don't mean to be harsh. But had you heard of him? I actually had. Oh, God. Because he was famous for never turning up to constituency events. And he, on the day that he announced he was defecting to Labour, he, he, people in his constituency, his local party, were out campaigning for him. And he hadn't bothered to tell them. They'd all gone out with Labour yeah, saying, vote down, Brilliant. Yeah. Let's, let's get <laughs> to another clip. What else was uh, up for discussion? Well, actually, the, this whole matter of the £46 billion alleged black hole in the Conservatives' finances when it comes to national insurance, that was brought up two weeks ago. Again, now, here's hold on a minute. This is... This is the Tory pledge that at some point they'd like to get rid of national yes. insurance. When they say that, what they mean is we're going to up income tax and just call it what it is, an income tax on work, which is what it actually is. No one actually thinks you're going to be paying you know, not having national insurance and that's not going to be replaced with an income tax. Well, exactly. And I mean, Keir if they do, they're insane. And Keir Starmer was talking to uh, Rishi Sunak at Prime Minister's Questions about all this, asking him questions about winter fuel allowances, for example, the pension age as well, and actually referenced Lord Frost at the start, uh, David Frost at the start of uh, this next question. I was sitting next to him at dinner last night. Oh, very nice. Excellent man. We need him in the, um, in the Commons, not the Lords, I'd say. Well, let's have a watch and a listen to what was said here. Luckily for him, one of his peers, Lord Frost, yes, him again, does. He says to solve the Tory spending plans, the state pension age should be raised to 75. Now, understandably, that will cause some alarm. So will the Prime Minister rule out forcing people to delay their retirement by years and years in order to fulfil his £46 billion black hole? Mr Speaker, I've answered this multiple times to the Honourable General. I'm happy to say again, this is the party that has delivered and protected the triple lock. But I know, Mr Speaker, ultimately, he's not worried about any of this because we all remember that he's got his very own personal pension plan. I think we, we all remember it, Mr Speaker. Indeed, it comes with its very own special law. I have to say, I mean, this stuff leaves me completely cold. Peter I mean, that goes I back to 2013 yeah. as well, when Keir Starmer I mean, was director of public prosecution. Yeah. I'm not sure how many people care, but certainly with the local elections tomorrow, this was never going to be no. about big policies. But, but this no, was always, always going to be What everyone else is scoring. talking about is what's going on with Rwanda, yeah. the immigration policy, and also this horrific stabbing uh, in, uh, in, in, in Hainault yeah. uh, yesterday. A 14-year-old lad dead, police officers seriously injured. Uh, we still don't know the motive of this attack, you know, stabbings across uh, London. I mean, it's extraordinary. It seems to me that these two politicians vying to remain as Prime Minister and to become the next Prime Minister are just talking about stuff that... I mean, it's just, they're just, it's game playing. It is game playing. And there's a lot of uh, sort of vote Conservative, vote Labour, vote Liberal Democrat kind of stuff that was... I have to name all, all the us. parties. Vote Green, vote Red. I mean, do we have to name them all? I don't <laughs> yes, know, probably. No, we, yes. we, we, we don't. But, but, but certainly there was a lot within that, uh, where which was just play, plain electioneering, pure and simple. There was no real substance to this. In fact, the only real substance was that Stephen Flynn question mm. that I asked in Gaza in, in regard to troops in the Middle East. And of course, the Prime Minister couldn't give an answer on that because yeah. it's an operational matter. Yeah, indeed. Um, Benedict Spence, I mean, again, these things, they're, they're, they're sort of for the party faithful, mm. aren't they, to pay attention to? I mean, there'll be a clip on the six o'clock news, but, and again, we've already had comments from both the part, main party leaders about you know, events in Hay Norton, talked mm. about, goodness me, migration a million times. But again, I suppose these are local elections. Do you think this 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 will help either side? No, I don't. I think that a lot of this is sort of baked in, um, what how people are going to vote at the local elections, and frankly, I don't think it will shift the down on national ones. But the only thing I would say is, again, the other week we had Oliver Dowden and Angela Rayner give us an absolutely 
like barnstorming performers. Yeah. And now we're back to these two dreary men again and thinking, goodness me, how much better it was a couple it, of weeks it, ago. It, well, I have to say, that really was very good, wasn't it? Well, it was. um, thank you very much, Peter Carr, well, talk presenter, of course. Uh, thank you very much indeed.